Hello students, welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Bhagya Lakshmi, Assistant Professor in the Department of Textiles and Clothing, Avinash Lingam University for Women, Coimbatore. I am going to take a topic on elements of design which deals with uh, the design elements in detail. Design is an art of mixing known elements in a creative way to develop pleasing combinations and appealing look in the garment. A good design is achieved when the elements of design are combined together harmoniously. Design is an arrangement of line, shape, color and texture in a pleasing way. These elements are therefore the raw materials in design development and these elements of visual design are also defined as the basic ingredients or components from which a visual design is made. In creating a design, elements always work in a combination with principles. Therefore, the elements of design are considered to be the basis in garment design. The elements of design should be used within the perspective of current fashion in order to present fashionable garments for a season. Fashion designers create structure and add functionality in a garment using different elements of design. The elements are the basic blocks which can transform a wide variety of messages and thus an apparel designer need to be familiar with the design elements as guides. Designers must understand both the potential and the limits of using elements of design. Although the elements are only one of its kind and original, they need to be combined to form a design. The objectives are to study about various elements of design and its types, to learn the concept of using elements of design in fashion designing and also to understand the methods of creating optical illusions through elements of design. The fundamental fashion design, there are different types of fashion design elements. Line and direction. A line has two points. It is an elongated mark connected between two points or the effect made by the edge of an object where there is no actual line on the object itself. Line refers to the shape or outline of a garment and divides the space in a garment. It is a realistic tool to function as visual and verbal medium in fashion designing. Line provides direction and movement. It directs the eye and divides the area by providing a breaking point in space. It creates a shape or a silhouette and thereby conveys a message. Visual illusions such as height and width, thinner or thicker effects are created by line. Lines separate entire areas into individual shapes and background spaces and are an important contributing factor in the beauty of form. There are different types of line. The lines may be divided into three different types. The first one is straight, the second one is curved and the third one is a zag line. Coming to the straight line, these lines form the basic structure. It is moderately stiff and severe. Garments designed with some theme will definitely have some lines in them. These lines show body angle and shape of the body. Straight lines in dress are visualized by seams, fullnesses, hemlines, trimming and decorations. They form a feeling of bold and dominant effects in a garment. The second one is a curved line. These lines are neither straight nor angular but rounded and circular to whatever degree desired. Circles and curves create larger spaces visually then they actually look and apparently increase the size and shape of the figure. They add smoothness and give a gentle and youthful look to the wearer. Fully curved lines give a feminine outlook. Most of the natural body shapes are emphasized through seams, darts and edge finishing. Restrained curved lines less likely to emphasize the body curves but extend a feminine and graceful effect on the wearer. Seams, princess lines, draping, fullness and patterns in a form are few examples to exhibit restrained curved lines. The third one is a zag line. These lines are made up of abrupt lines and have sharp edges like zigzags. These lines show a feeling of confusion yet give an excited and fashionable look. Since these lines are more angular and sharp, they are noticeable. Therefore, use of zag lines should be minimum. 
If used in excess, creativity lies in the hands of designers to provide the best line. Directions of line. Line can cause the eye to move in any direction although it has only one dimension, that of length. There are three kinds of movements such as vertical, horizontal or diagonal direction. When we look into the vertical lines, these lines manifest the feelings of poise, dignity, good posture, strength, stability, uprightness or aspiration. These lines lead the eye upwards and downwards. Added height and slimness are the impressions created by vertical lines. Seam lines, princess lines, placket lines, fullness, fabric patterns and draping lines for example demonstrate the vertical effect. Horizontal lines are line at rest. These lines imply a visual feeling of rest or repose as it is parallel to the ground. More often, these lines suggest a sense of calm, serenity, gentleness and will lead the eyes across the garment and give a feeling of less height and more width. Horizontal lines are seen at necklines, yoke lines, waist lines and hem lines. Diagonal lines may be described as the best line since it follows the body motion. Diagonal lines portray powerful movement and activity. These lines are always slanted and suggest a direction. Diagonal lines in a garment tend to slenderize the body and are seen to be very strong. These lines draw attention where they are used. Their degree of slant determines their visual effect in clothes. If they are vertically slant, they give slenderness feeling and if they are horizontally slant, they add width. These lines are found generally in panels, seams, darts, V necklines, collars and lapels, flat trousers, A-line skirts, bias cut strips and raglan sleeves. Now let us see the types of illusions created by line in dress. To create an optical illusion, an understanding of the line movement, the psychology of color and the effect of various textures in expanding and reducing the size is essential. Designers should be sensitive about line direction and the following optical illusions can be created by the use of lines. Repeated unbroken verticals exaggerate height. Repeated thin vertical lines widens. Dominant panel in the center broadens the figure. Center front seam line reduces hip width. Side flares broaden the hips. Heavy banding around the hemline shortens and broadens the figure. Details near hip broadens the figure. Converging and diverging pair of diagonals will broaden the shoulder, increase the hip and seam lines, increase the bust and waist lines. A raglan sleeve also exaggerate weakness and narrowness of the shoulders. Satin sleeves strengthen the shoulders. In clothing, lines often combined into designs that appear to form an arrow or the letters T, I or Y. Lines that form T also stop the upward movement of the I. Lines that form the letter I tend to give a vertical feeling. Lines that form the letter Y keep the gaze moving upward even further. Now let us see the second element of design that is shape and silhouette. Silhouette refers to a form of one solid color projected against a background of another color so that only the shape is visible. In fashion, the term silhouette is used to refer to the line of a dress or the garment's overall shape. It also implies the outline of a form. This can be used to dramatically emphasize and alter a woman's appearance. Since the shape is the first impression, it possesses greater power to convey an image of beauty, style and taste than any other design element. Different dress silhouettes are designed to flatter different body types and to match the current fashion. Designers must constantly keep in mind the whole silhouette and the fashion report on prevailing mode as the fluid line. They are the burfant or the boxy T form, the chemise or the back flare. Each shape represents a particular fashion which influences the shape, the latest skirt length, shoulder width, sleeve contour, belt width, jacket length and so on. Entire silhouette is visualized from head to toe 
and from front to back. Based on the shape and visualization of silhouettes, it can be discussed under the following chapters. Types of silhouettes for individuals. The first one is ball gown. It is fitted in the chest and down the tarzo and then flares at the waist into a very full, often multi-layered skirt. This style is flattering on almost any body type but is especially flattering for petite women or full-figured women. On a pear-shaped woman, the full skirt can camouflage large hips. Empire style of silhouette has a waist line which is raised to directly beneath the bust with a skirt that flares slightly from the raised waist down. This dress is particularly recommended for women who do not have a definite waist but is not recommended for women with a pronounced hard glass shape. A-line silhouette on the other hand is, a, is usually a one-piece garment. It flares gently at the waist or hips thus resembling the letter A. It is similar to the ball gown with a fitted chest and tarzo. However, the skirt is much less full. This creates a smoother, more flowing line from the tarzo to the floor or an overall body shape. Sheath kind of a silhouette flows straight down from the neckline, thus gently hugging form. This is used to refer to dresses that are form-fitting from the bust through the length of the thighs. This is generally recommended for thin women who have gentle to no curves. Mermaid This is a voluminous silhouette that follows the figure down to the knee before flaring out dramatically. It is mainly for the petite figures with less junk in the trunk and no tummy bulge. The mermaid silhouette is designed for women who have flattering curves that they want to accentuate. It is extremely fitted to the knee at which point it flares out dramatically. It is not recommended for women who are short. Natural waist silhouettes are often most flattering since it draws the attention to the smallest part of any individual's waist. Attention to the waist can be made with a seam, belt, fabric, texture, applique and so on. Trapeze kind of a silhouette is also known as tent or trapezoid. Trapeze literally looks like a triangle on an individual. Thus, it is not the most flattering on everyone. This silhouette works best with the sheer fabrics as it still shows off no curves. Chemist type of silhouette is a rectangular kind of a silhouette from top to bottom and it's straight and shapeless. Fit and flare kind of a silhouette have the shape of an A-line skirt. This silhouette is extremely common right now. H-line silhouette. This is usually of one-piece garment going straight from shoulder to hip and crossed at the waist with a belt, cuff or other accent thus resembling the letter H. The third element of design is a texture. Texture is the element of design that describes surface appearance and feel. It also means the roughness or smoothness of fabric and is perceived as much as by sight as well as by touch. It is quality of roughness or smoothness, dullness or glossiness, stiffness or softness and so on. To work professionally with fabrics, it is important to understand how every material falls when cut as well as what effect it have on an individual. Texture affects light absorption reflectance and the same color may appear different when wet and dry, rough and smooth. So the determinants of the texture may be discussed. The types of textures may be divided into several classes. Those that absorb the light and are consequently dull surfaced due to the properties of their raw material, rough yarn, fabric construction or finish or a rough cotton soothing. Those that reflect the light are lustrous because of the luster and smoothness of their raw material or the smoothness of the yarns or the weave as satin or because of the kind of finish as glazed chains. Those that both reflect and absorb light are pile fabrics, velvet and satin. Textures can be described as lightweight, medium weight or heavy weight. It can also be divided into two different ways that is structural texture and added visual texture. Tuck, structural texture refers to 
the fabric or the garment whereas the visual texture refers to the print design finish is given to the fabric after it is constructed it can also impart or change its structure finish is also alters the texture of the fabric some finishes like sizing gives stiffness moiring adds shine and watermark design to the fabric calendering also give shininess to the fabric singeing makes the surface smooth and napping makes the fabric fuzzy so colors also also change the texture of the fabric colors from textured and wrinkled fabrics seem darker because of more shadows colors on fuzzy surfaces look duller colors on firm and smooth surfaces seem flat now let us see the effect of texture on individual physical proportion textures have the physical properties of weight size bulk shape light absorption and reflection textures can produce illusions that change apparent body size textures can make one look heavier or thinner let us see few examples of textures how it makes an individual to look different smooth and flat textures make people look smaller they are suitable for almost all figures and physique they can hide some figure irregularities rough textures tend to subdue the colors of the fabrics sheer fabrics also tend to do the same as the skin of the wearer is seen through them fabrics that are soft and drapeable cling to the body and show every contour and reveal body irregularities their use should be limited to those people who wish to reveal their body this fabric clingingness to the body can be changed by the addition of lining to your garment textures that are stiff stand away from the body which would hide body irregularity persons who are average to tall in height having either average or thin body are benefited by wearing very stiff fabrics small physique persons should avoid these fabrics as they look dwarf overweight people look heavier because these fabrics stand away from the body creating the illusion of additional thickness a moderate amount of stiffness is desirable for overweight people as it does not cling and reveal the exact contours shiny texture reflects light and make the person wearing them appear larger fabrics that absorb light are dull and do not enlarge body people who do not wish to call attention to their body irregularities should select very thin or thick very soft or stiff or very shiny texture these fabrics are not structurally interesting so other features such as color and line are often used to add interest to garments designed of such factors The scale of textures should be selected in relationship to the size of the person. A contrast in texture will emphasize form. A small sized body wearing large scale textures can get vanished. On the other hand, pettiness is emphasized by large scale texture. Very heavy people who wear large scale texture will appear heavier. because there is repetition of size and added visual texture can also affect the apparent size of the wearer large bold prints emphasize the area and increase the apparent size of the wearer the fourth element of design is pattern pattern is the interplay of values and colors created by print designs weave structures or by embroidery Choosing patterns depend on their use in costume in relation to the person who uses a combination of several design elements such as line shapes colors are arranged on textural material to create a pattern there are different types of pattern classic patterns retain their fashionability and this their wearability exists for more years the classic patterns are always in good taste and look familiar these patterns are almost available and are in style despite trends in small to medium scale trendy patterns have distinctive lines shapes they are larger in scale and bold they are bright or stronger in color it can be used appropriately in garments there are different ways in which we can use the pattern since it adds interest to plain surface of the fabric it helps to coordinate two or more solid colored items it creates an area of emphasis and illusions it expresses personal style there are different types of motifs or patterns which could be used on fabrics first one is naturalistic motif it is the photocopy of nature and appears realistic 
whereas the conventional motif is the stylized form of natural or man-made objects, whereas the abstract motif is the exaggerated imagination of an artist wherein stylized geometric forms are used. Geometric motif is the exact application of geometrical shapes such as square, rectangle, circle and the textural pattern. These motifs could be arranged in different ways on fabric. One can do all over arrangement. This would appear the same from any direction and the four way arrangement can also be done and the two way arrangement and one way arrangement of patterns could also be done. The border arrangement appeared to right side up from only one selvage edge. Let us see the effect of pattern on physical proportion. Patterns are used to emphasize the body in order to enlarge areas and chubbiness. Bold advancing designs suit only the most dramatic personalities. Versatile patterns suit a wide range of persons. Reserved patterns suit women than in girls. Angular geometric patterns suit the broad shouldered personalities. Dainty small patterns suit the small figures. Use of trimmings and decorations may also enlarge or minimize the body proportions. Let us see the fifth element of design that is color. Color is an element in dress design. It must be combined harmoniously. The color scheme must be becoming to the wearer and suitable to the occasion. Color has the power to attract or repel. Several color systems are in use today. Though the prank theory of color system is used extensively and is explained as follows. There are different properties of color. Color refers to specific hues and is properties of color. Color refers to specific hues and has three properties such as hue, intensity and value. Hue indicates the name or quality of color. Value indicates the lightness or darkness of a color. Whereas the intensity indicates the brightness or dullness of a color. According to the prank color system, there are 12 hues in the spectrum of color. Color wheel is made up of primary colors, secondary colors and intermediate colors. Primary colors such as red, blue and yellow cannot be combined from mixing any other colors together. Secondary colors such as orange, violet, green are created by mixing two primaries. Intermediate colors such as red orange and yellow green, blue violet are derived by mixing a primary with a secondary creates these colors. When we talk about color harmonies, the color harmonies are created with combinations of color. There are two major types of color harmony, related color harmony and contrasting color harmony. Under related color harmony, we have monochromatic and analogous color harmony. In monochromatic, only one color is used. In analogous, three colors are used. The colors are chosen from the color field that is that are placed next to each other. Under contrasting color harmony, we have four different types that is complementary color, split complementary, triad and tetrad colors. Complementary color includes two colors. Double complementary color includes four colors. Split complementary makes use of three colors. Triad uses three colors and tetrad uses four colors. It is shown on the table displayed. The effect of color on individuals. This is an important aspect for a fashion designer to learn about. Effect of colors on individual. Warm colors are on one side of the color wheel and they give the feeling of warmthness and make the wearer look larger because they advance. Cool colors are effect of colors on individual. Warm colors namely red, orange and yellow make the wearer look larger and they advance. Cool colors such as blue, violet, green are the colors of water. They make the wearer look smaller and they tend to recede. Bright colors on the other hand create larger appearance than the dull colors. To conclude this module, learning the meaning of taste in fashion designing is an art. Try to understand what constitutes good design 
and learn to distinguish various elements of design as guides are essential. All art is concerned with certain plastic elements because it is possible to manipulate them. The plastic elements are line, form, texture, pattern and color. It is necessary to analyze each element individually and learn to fit them effectively to get a pleasing design. Use of various elements of design while designing costumes for an individual is based on the body composition and it will give a feeling of satisfaction. In addition, the effect of illusions created by these elements are discussed in this module. Hope this module will give an idea about the use of various elements of design in garment designing. Thank you.